Welcome back my World 2 family from around the world. It's Abraham, supervisor here at South Coast One Academy. And in tonight's video, I'm gonna be welding some aluminum to carbon, okay? And tonight's sponsor is Spur Industries. You'll hear more about them later on on the show. All right guys, so just like you heard in uh, the intro, I'm gonna be welding some aluminum to carbon. Um, how I'm gonna be doing that is by using this uh, bimetal pipe transitioner right here okay half of it is metal and then the other half is uh, carbon okay uh, we, we were able to acquire this piece uh, by tonight's sponsor Sprint Industries they're a company that specializes in bonding dissimilar metals okay and uh, uh, they use a process called roll bonding what is roll bonding uh, roll bonding is uh, when they pass two uh, metals through a set of rollers and the high pressure causes the metals to bond at a molecular level causing a metallurgical bond okay this bimetal pipe transitioner is usually used in uh, fluid applications uh, when you never you need to transition from uh, aluminum to carbon aluminum to stainless um, this actually eliminates the need for gasket or flanges uh, which uh, you know uh, wherever there's a gasket or a flange it's a weak point you know and this will eliminate that all right guys so as uh, we move over here uh, as you can see we have our uh, metal transitioner already piped up to uh, to the pipes uh, it's already ready to be welded out uh, but first, let me explain how you would uh, go about tacking this or fitting it properly, okay? So, uh, this is the aluminum side right here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is measure about 3 8 from the edge of the pipe. Make a line, whether it would be with a soapstone, a pencil, a marker, something you can see a line with. And get your transitioner. Uh, use the proper side. And then you're gonna slide the transitioner up to the line, okay? Uh, the reason why you measure three eighths is because when you go ahead and put the other the other side of the different uh, metal, uh, you don't want the dissimilar uh, metals touching, okay? You don't leave a gap in between, okay? Uh, after that, you go you would go ahead and uh, you know put your tag at twelve o'clock, uh, then six o'clock, uh, three o'clock, nine o'clock. Um, and go ahead and get the other pipe, the carbon one. Go ahead and put this one. Like I said, you would measure uh, 3 8 from the edge of the pipe, slide it up to the line, and you need to make sure that the, the metals aren't touching, okay? After that, you'll go ahead and tack it up. I put a tack at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Uh, you can either do this alone, probably with some uh, jack stance, or if you have some uh, pitter friends, you can call them up and uh, they'll do it for you. And you'll just, you know, tack it. Just like we do it in the plants, the refineries. But yeah, uh, as you can see, we have the piece already tacked up right here. It's ready to be welded out. I am going to be uh, welding the aluminum side first. But before uh, tacking everything up, you want to make sure that you properly prepare everything, okay? Your prep up with aluminum is very, very important. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to brush up brush away all brush the oxidation layer away and you're gonna want to clean your aluminum with some acetone okay uh, same thing for the uh, for the carbon pipe it's not as delicate as the aluminum uh, what you're just gonna to want to do is remove the mill skull away from it make sure that it's nothing but clean metal in there okay uh, these aluminum tacks uh, the temperature I did it I did them was at a uh, 190 amps and over here on the carbon side I did uh, uh, did 180 amps okay all right, guys, so we're right here in front of the Miller Dynasty 280. This is the machine I'm going to be using to weld, weld in tonight's video. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to put it on the AC function. It's already on the AC function. Uh, that's what you need whenever you're going to weld aluminum. You need an alternate current, meaning it's switching from negative to positive, vice versa. Okay, I'm going to go over here and uh, set my amps at 190 amps. All right, I'm going to start with that. And if I need, and if I feel that I need more amps or more heat, I'm gonna go up. Or if I feel that it's too hot, I'm gonna go down. But this is what I'm gonna start at, just like I did my tax. I'm gonna go over here and go to the balance. It says 68 percent. I actually want that at 70 percent. Okay. Uh, you might ask yourself, what is balance? All right. Uh, AC balance is the relationship of the positive side of the wave uh, to the negative side of the wave. Okay. Um, which is usually displayed in percentage right here. Okay. Uh, this is the Miller machine, so the Miller machine uh, uh, displays the negative side of the wave, okay? Uh, 
Some manufacturers display the positive side. Um, you're gonna have to check with your manufacturer to see which side of the wave is displaying on the screen right here. I know this is the middle, so I know it's the negative side. So I'm at 70% on the negative side and 30% uh, uh, on the positive side, okay? Now, I'm gonna go over here to my uh, AC frequency. Um, it's already set at 120 hertz, okay? Uh, to me, I feel comfortable at 120 hertz. Um, if uh, you're welding uh, something very, very thin, you're gonna want more hertz versus if you're welding something uh, pretty, pretty thick, are you gonna want less hertz, okay? But I'm gonna start at, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weld at 120 hertz. All right guys, so I'm gonna give a brief explanation of what AC balance is and what AC frequency is. Uh, AC balance is the relationship of the positive side of the AC wave to the negative side of the wave. AC frequency is how much the current changes from the positive to negative a specific amount of times in a one second cycle, okay? Um, so why do you need an alternate current whenever you're welding aluminum? Uh, the reason you need an alternate current whenever you're welding aluminum is because aluminum has an uh, oxidation layer that needs to be broken up uh, before welding. And whenever uh, the current is on the positive side, uh, that's what it does. It does a cleaning action. It pretty much uh, breaks that uh, layer up and allows you to weld it. And whenever it switches to the negative side, uh, it, it's penetrating, okay? So a brief, brief example, whenever the current is going from... Uh, is on the negative side your current is traveling from the torch into the pipe whenever it's on the positive side the current is traveling into the torch okay and it's alternating back and forth this is why you need an, that's what ac stands for and that's why you need an alternate current whenever you're welding aluminum to break up that oxidation layer okay uh, the reason i have my settings at 70 percent uh negative and 20 percent and 30 percent positive is because i want to keep my uh my tungsten uh pointing which is gonna keep my uh, my art more concentrated, um, and then it's gonna give me a sharper art, and I'm gonna be able to control my puddle better. Okay, if I was to keep it at 50/50 uh, or have the same balance as a cleaning action, meaning my uh, meaning the current traveling into my torch, it would uh, ball up my tungsten more, and that's not what I want. Right here, I kind of drew an example of a of a wave right here at 120 hertz. Uh, this is what your wave will look like. And at uh, 60 hertz is what your wave would look look like, all right? Um, but yeah, 70% uh, uh, penetrating, 30% cleaning action. All right, guys, so um, as you can see my setup right here, I'm going to be using a turntable to roll this pipe out. Um, on this pedal right here, uh, on my right foot, it's the pedal I'm going to be initiating my arc with. And on my left, on my left uh, leg is the pedal where I'm going to be turning the pipe. Okay. Now check this out. In the comments, I better not see anything about my gloves. Look, I know I'm using dirty gloves, and I know I'm not supposed to when I'm welding aluminum. But uh, I'm not going to go up in a brand new pair of gloves when I don't need it. These don't have any holes in them, so I'm going to keep using these till I put a hole in them. So, anyways, uh, let's get started. Again, I'm running about 190 amps. Turn my argon on. All right guys, so right there, I'm really, really, really cold. I was struggling to uh, initiate a puddle. So obviously I need to go more, I need to go higher in my amp. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine probably to 220 now, see what that does.
Alright guys, so I just finished my first pet beat on it. Um, <laughs> not too happy with it, but let's see what I can do now. I'm going to start my second bead and uh, see how it comes out. second bead right there uh, the pipe is, is starting to get hot uh, I'm starting to move on a lot faster than I did in the beginning but I'm actually liking the appearance a lot better it's a lot smoother <laughs> I am having to feed a lot really really quick Alright guys, remember, after you finish every pass before applying a second pass or more passes on top of your weld, on top of your welds, uh, you always want to clean it, you know. Always want to clean it, you know. That's going to ensure that you get a nice clean puddle as you weld. As you can tell, I'm actually getting the hang of this a little bit more as I keep on welding, um, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, let's see how it looks. Man, that looks really good right there. Alright guys, so there you have it for the aluminum side. Uh, I'm gonna switch over and do the uh, carbon side. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Alright guys, so I just finished doing my aluminum side and I'm going to hop over to my carbon side. Uh, from the aluminum side, I was using uh, the dab technique. I was just dabbing, 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 dabbing. As you can see from the video, I was dabbing pretty fast. Uh, that puddle at times was uh, heating up real quick, so I had to move real fast. 
and uh, I was controlling, uh, you know, how fast the turntable turned with my with my foot down here. All right, so for my aluminum, I use the uh, dab technique. Uh, for carbon, I'm just gonna go ahead and walk the cup all the way through. Get it? I am running at 180 amps right now for my carbon. All right, guys. So there you have it. Uh, aluminum to carbon. Okay, uh, using this uh, bimetal uh, pipe transition right here, uh, supplied uh, to us by uh, Spur Industries. Okay. Again, if uh, you really really like this video, uh, uh, don't forget to donate to St. Jude. Um, it's for a good cause, and every dollar helps. Okay. And uh, again, I'd like to thank everybody who's been watching our videos from the beginning. Uh, thank y'all very much. Um, but yeah, don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. Until next time.